And then it says, being duly sworn, deposes and says. Those are the words that are required to be on any affidavit. If you don't have those words on an affidavit, it's not really an affidavit. And it's upon information and belief that the said defendant, and then once again, they're going to print your name in all capital letters. And then they're going to go down to this rest of this stuff here. This is a copy of the complaint they gave me in court saying that this was a true copy of the complaint. Well, if it's a true copy of the complaint, I can go free right now because nobody is testifying that I should have been arrested. And you'll notice at the bottom here it says, Complainant therefore prays that a warrant issue. Now let's take a look at that. That a warrant issue, does that mean it's going to happen in the future or that means it already happened? Praise that a warrant issue it means it's going to happen in the future. And yet, I was arrested without having a warrant issued and the warrant issued after the fact. So, how, does, how, does, how, do, you, how do you even have that wording on there and to be accurate? It's not true. Then, when I was arrested, I was arrested by a sheriff's officer, and yet, who's the complaining party here? Do you see any problem with that? If the district attorney signs this letter, he's lying and he's committing perjury. Because he is saying that he's the complainant and he's praying that a warrant shall issue. Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. In other words, you can't arrest me, that's a seizure of my body, shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue but upon probable cause support, supported by oath or affirmation. Okay, so the only way you can arrest me and seize me is if there's oath or affirmation, and it has to be the person who's witnessing the crime. So we go back to this. Is the district attorney, did the district attorney witness a crime? No. Okay, let's go beyond that. Then, then it would be perjury because he didn't witness a crime. Then, then we also know that the district, dip, deputy district attorneys, the person who signs this line here, this person who is going to sign the line is not signing in their own capacity, are they? I mean, because then just remove the deputy district attorney from underneath and the person will be signing in their own capacity. But they're not signing in their own capacity. What if that said Bank of America down below? The person who is signing it would be a representative of the Bank of America. That's who's the, who's the complaining party, the Bank of America. The complaining party is the Deputy District Attorney, in all caps, a fictional entity. Can fictional entities go to prison? I mean, how would you put a fictional entity in jail? I think you'd have a problem with that because, first of all, you couldn't find the, the, the uh, fictional entity. I had a policeman tell me one time that... Uh, <clears throat> It was the city of Santa Rosa that had a right to take the property by eminent domain. And I said, can I meet Mr. City of Santa Rosa? You see, that's the issue. Can I meet Mr. City of Santa Rosa? No? Well, then it's not the city of Santa Rosa that's taking the property. It's you. You're the one that's taking the property. So I'm going to have to sue you. And in this case, I love it. Here we have... <laughs> an unsigned complaint and they're going to charge me and arrest me with an unsigned complaint. Wow. Violations of the law everywhere. So, <clears throat> the Fourth Amendment rights under the Constitution require an oath based upon probable cause sworn to. When you get the complaint, usually it isn't signed and it's blank. Is this a true copy of the complaint? Ask them in court because they're supposed to they're supposed to give you a true copy of the complaint, right? So if they gave you a, that copy and they said, "Okay, you've been given the complaint," you can just hold it up. Is this a true copy of the complaint? And if they say yes, 
That's a contract right there. They said yes, that this blank unsigned copy is a true copy. Okay, I'm walking then. There's no complaint against me. I can't plead guilty or not guilty to an invalid complaint. Do you understand the problem for them there? I mean, if there's no signed complaint, then there is no complaint, and there's no complaint to plead to. So the complaint has to be valid before you can be required to enter a plea of guilty or not guilty. How can you enter a plea to an invalid complaint? The complaint is what gives them jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is another interesting discussion. Okay, then you, if, if they say it's a true copy, you'd say, yes, okay, I demand this matter be dismissed for lack of a valid complaint as there's no complaining party. And then they'll probably do some like, well, we'll get you a copy of the signed one. No, it's too late for that. Did you just commit perjury by saying this was a true copy and now you're saying it's not? Perjury in court, in open court, you committed a fraud upon the court. So I'm going to read you from, um, this is a decision that uh, Scalia voted on. This is dissenting opinion, so it's not actually the opinion of the Supreme Court, but we have a Supreme Court judge writing it. The issue before us today is of perfectly that sort, as we have recently had occasion to explain the Fourth Amendment's pro prohibition of unreasonable seizures insofar as it applies to seizure of the person preserves for our citizens the traditional protections against unlawful arrest afforded by the common law. This is in uh, 1991, okay? Common law. See, go California versus Hodari, 1999. One of those, one of the most important of those was that a person arresting a suspect without a warrant must deliver the arrestee to a magistrate. They don't ever do that here in Sonoma County. As soon as he reasonably can. Quote, Although, actually, the penal code does not say as soon as he reasonably can. I mean, reasonably is like he had a heart attack and died and couldn't carry out his function, or he got into a car accident. Not just, you know, he decided to go by booking first and then wait for three days while you're in booking. It is the duty of a person arresting anyone on suspicion of felony, felony, you know, this is not misdemeanor arrests, which there are plenty of, to take him before a magistrate as soon as he reasonably can. When a constable arrests a party for treason or felony, he must take him before a magistrate to be examined as soon as he reasonably can. These are all different court cases. The practice of the United States was the same. See Amjur 2nd, 76 and 77 in 1962. It is clear, moreover, that the only element bearing upon the reasonableness of delay was not such circumstances as to the pressing need to, to conduct further investigation, by, but the arresting officer's ability, once the prisoner had been secured, to reach a magistrate who could issue the needed warrant for further detention. This is... Chief Justice Scalia of the Supreme Court, okay, stating this in his dissenting opinion. Any detention beyond the period within which a warrant could have been ordered rendered, the officer is liable for false arrest. Okay. If it's signed, it will usually be signed by the, the, the complaint, right? by the DA, and the DA is a witness to the case. Let's look at, uh, this is a Supreme Court in decision in 1997, Kalina versus Fletcher, quote, even when the person who makes the constitutionally required oath or affirmation is a lawyer, the only function that she performs in giving sworn testimony is that of a witness. 